and is not thought to have been on any official watch lists. Well, let's discuss the implications of all of this and the uh, security issues clearly facing France. Olivier Guita has joined us, a French security expert and managing director of Global Strat. Thank you for being here. And uh, Marco Vicenzino, the director of the Global Strategy Project and a political risk analyst. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you. And uh, three serious attacks in France in the space of just 18 months What's your thoughts as to why? Why France? Why not lots of other countries that we could name? It's a new reality for Europe, a new status quo. Much of it goes back years. I mean, France was seeing attacks on, on its soil in the 1990s with a similar type of jihadist uh, mindset. Much of that in the 90s had to do with the Algerian civil war going on at the time. So France, it, this is not, it, it's maybe the magnitude of the terrorism, the, see the magnitude of the debts involved, yet yeah, that's much different from the 1990s. Much of it has to do also with, with France's ventures overseas as part of a Western alliance against jihadist movements, not just in the, in the Middle East, but we're also talking in Africa. So this new reality of Europe is not so much a new reality for countries in the Middle East, North Africa, and South Asia. For them, for example, in the early morning hours of, Jan of July 8th, they had a massive car truck bomb in Baghdad which claimed probably more than 300 lives. So that's their reality. Mm. It's, on a, it's on a different scope and it's on a different level. But in this terms is that, I mean, you look even at American societies, you have the organized attacks and then you have the lone wolf attacks. The lone wolf attacks are the biggest, say, uh, for law enforcement authorities, the biggest challenges. But if this proves, for example, to be a lone wolf attack, having claimed 84 lives, in the U.S. we had the attacks in Orlando, 49 lives, you cannot profile many of these attackers. There's no single road to radicalization. So they're struggling right now at okay. present. Can, can I just, yeah, I mean, sure. I'm, I'm bringing Olivier in a moment, sure. but just, but lots of, lots of nations are involved in military campaigns. It's, it's not France on its own, so why... But I just wonder whether people watching will think, wh why have we seen three really big attacks in, in one specific country? Why, why not yeah. here in the UK, it's, for example? Why yeah, well, not other... the UK, they do try, and they have tried many times. They've been thwarted. It's more difficult for them to enter the UK. Go into France, I was referring to its foreign policy. Then you have to look at the inside of France also. Sure. There's been issues of integration, and there's a huge debate internally that's been going on for decades because there are many people from the former colonies who now live in France, have not been able to integrate. And you see some of the highest levels of recruits to ISIS are from countries like Belgium and France. And this individual, remember, he's a Tunisian national, and some of the highest recruits from the Middle East to ISIS is specifically from Tunisia. There it's different reasons for radicalization. But once again, there's no single way, there's no single road to radicalization. What I mean by that, in each society, there are similar but also very different reasons, whether it's integration internally in the country or a nation's foreign policy, which can even radicalize individuals on the inside of their country. Young Muslims in France, for example, have not integrated. They're looking at TV at night and they see Middle Eastern societies, they see conflict, the war. A very simple narrative can develop. And ISIS has used a very simple narrative, and that simple narrative has been an effective one, particularly on the airwaves. Okay.